the whole purpose of today is not, oh, you're using Google, you should also use Microsoft. Like, oh, did you know Microsoft is great? It is great. Um, but we want you to take it one step further. We want to get people thinking in preparation for the future about how they can kind of, oh, Renee, you can't unmute. Sorry, we're just asking for people to introduce themselves via the questions box. But hello, Renee, nice to meet you. Um, so we're going to talk about splitting your time, your focus, your strategy, your energy between Google and Microsoft. Microsoft will continue to grow. Um, and we're going to talk about the easy way to do it and why that's not really that great, especially if you've invested a lot of time and effort into Google Ads. There's kind of a map by map by map approach that you'd rather take to start building out your Google and Microsoft together. So first introductions. Uh, my name is Nick Rajpal. I'm the VP of Marketing Sciences. Uh, I joined the company 15 years ago. I'm the um, host of our webinar series. I do one every two weeks. And uh, I'm in charge of uh, our strategy uh, approach for e-commerce clients. And 15 years ago, I was brought on to develop all of our solutions. Awesome. And I'm Melissa Knowlton. So I'm the head of paid search and video advertising here at Exclusive. I joined Exclusive in 2019. My four-year anniversary is actually just two weeks away. So very excited for that. Um, I lead the strategy on both paid search, display, video, and discovery campaigns across Google and Microsoft. Uh, I actively manage Google and Microsoft campaigns every single day. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about all of that. Awesome. Um, we won't get in a lot of details about us. Maybe we'll introduce ourselves a little bit later. Here's a handful of clients that trust us. We are e-commerce a uh, uh, holistic agency. Um, been around since 1997. And we manage uh, roughly 15 plus channels for clients. So first of all, let's just talk a little bit about uh, Microsoft. Is it growing? Has it already grown? Like where are we in? in this shift of tides. So of all the numbers that kind of matter, I think this is the one that matters the most. There are 49 million people you can reach through Microsoft ads that you just can't reach through any of Google's network. Um, but that's just in the US. There's more significantly greater pie outside of the US. So that's, um. That's pretty powerful, and of course, all those numbers are before ChatGPT. So the integration of ChatGPT um, into uh, Bing, there's a lot of new users now kind of switching over. Um, the people who have tried to use uh, ChatGPT Preview are turning, turning into daily users, about a third of them. And that is on top of a infrastructure that Microsoft has been developing slowly over time, where they're trying to get into places where you know ads can run, where you probably wouldn't see a Google ad running. Of course, there's Edge, there's Bing, there's Microsoft. Also, Outlook and Microsoft Office properties ads running their Xbox, LinkedIn. Um, there are so many strategic uses for targeting B2B through MSN, and they've kind of furthered their their way in, and, and gamers, right? You can't think of a great way through Google to target either one of those groups, not the way that Microsoft has kind of put their footing out there. But you would expect that Microsoft, because of Edge, it might be like an older demographic that is not um, that hasn't adopted Google or you know Chrome or Firefox, but just kind of stuck to whatever they're used to. But it doesn't seem to be the case at all. If the demographic focus of Microsoft ads is actually quite similar to Google, with a slight 
um, advantage that like Pinterest that has 40% of its users or 100,000 plus household income, Microsoft's close to that. 41% of their users have a household income of 85,000 plus. And you think again, how, why is that so? Because they're LinkedIn users. They can afford an Xbox. There are certain things that kind of separated them and they went after a particular target that is a slightly higher household. And most important from our perspective is um, we have we have a almost infinite number of channels that we can invest in for our clients. Our clients trust us to figure out where to spend their money to stay in front of their customers, build brand and, and finish the purchase. And uh, we choose Microsoft. 75% of our clients are on Microsoft ads because it performs and just side by side, it's worth the money. So quick poll time. Just want to see what people's breakdown is here. We're going to ask you essentially two different ways of thinking about this. When it comes to ad spend, what's closest to your ad spend breakdown? 100% Google, 80, 60, 40. That last one should say 20, not 2%. Okay, so I'm going to close this out in three, two, one. Let's see what your peers are saying here. Some nice round numbers. 55%. Are not doing Microsoft. Ooh, wow. 35% uh, have that, you know, 80 20 rule going. 10% of you are starting to see a balance. Okay. Good, good. Um, now, what about time and energy? How much time and energy do you put into strategy for Google versus Microsoft? Actually setting up the right audiences, ad types, managing, not just copying Google. Okay, I'll close this out in three, two, one. Okay. So the vast majority of you are spending between zero and 20% of your time on the search engine that has 48 million Americans using it that you can't reach through Google. One out of six Americans. That's, that's pretty crazy. Um, and for years, it's kind of just been well, I could just copy everything from Google over, so why should I spend that much time? Aren't they the same? And so we want to talk a little bit about what is the same or what is different. But we want you to kind of pay attention to, when we talk about ad types, literally display ad types for one side or the other, that this is why you don't want to just copy all of your campaigns over. Forget the fact that the tool is finicky like crazy. Um, you put a lot of thought into ledger A, what did I build in Google? You have to put equal thought into ledger B, how do I rebuild it for Microsoft? To guide us through this, we turn to Mosa. Mosa, before you start, I'm going to give you some uh, access here that should allow you to control the screen. <laughs> Just give me a second. This is All good. Hopefully it works this time. It didn't last yeah. time. Yeah. So we'll see. Always the funnest. Want to try that? Let me try clicking. You're good? Awesome. Perfect. Sweet. Thanks. 
Awesome. So going to run through the differences and similarities between Google and Microsoft advertising. Uh, some of the first like upfront unique features of Microsoft ads is first the visual ad options. And we'll get into that about the differences between them and Google as we go through. Of course, chat, chat GBT, like Nick had mentioned, then the LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile targeting, which we'll also get into in a bit, and then the Facebook import, to, Facebook import tool, which is separate from Google. We're not importing anything from Facebook into Google. Awesome. Um, so the first campaign type I want to talk through is search ads. So standard search ads across both channels are pretty similar. We can build both responsive search ads. So that is taking like a variety of headlines and descriptions and then giving them to the platform itself and letting it be rearranged based on um, the platform's interpretation of like what's performing best and what's not. What makes Microsoft stand out is they have another ad type called multimedia ads that you can run alongside your search or run alongside your responsive search ads within your search campaigns. Multimedia ads, if you're familiar with dynamic or not dynamic with um, Oh yeah, dynamic display ads, or no, responsive display ads, sorry. Responsive display ads, RDAs, um, they look a lot like that, but responsive display ads on Google only run within display campaigns. Multimedia ads on Microsoft run across their display campaigns, which are the audience ads, and also their search campaigns. The perk of this is you are getting much wider reach with your search campaigns than you are with your Google search campaigns, because the Google search campaigns are limited to the search engine results page, whereas Microsoft search campaigns can reach within that MSAN network and attract more users through visual components that a Google Ads just doesn't do it the same way. And then both campaign types, of course, um, offer dynamic search ads too, which is using the on-site SEO work that you guys have been doing for any of your um, e-commerce pages or anything like that to pull it into a search campaign so we can bid towards keywords that are being shown on your website. And then a case study here, a specific case study that I actually did, this is one of my clients, um, DK Hardware. So DK Hardware was crushing it on Google like a lot of you guys have here. We put a lot of our time and energy towards Google and Microsoft wasn't getting a lot of TLC, but we realized there was so much untapped potential with uh, their Microsoft advertising that we decided to put a lot more time and energy towards it. Their only strict goal they have with us is a 400% return on ad spend for their non-brand campaigns. What we ended up doing was we invested more towards Microsoft. We increased their ad spend by 35% year over year. And from that increased ad spend, we were able to drive 40% more conversions, 46% higher ROAS than we had before. Um, and then overall in search uh, spend investment for the entire thing was 62%, but non-brand specific was 35. And then their overall revenue increased 75%. So overall worked super well for us to get in front of these users, because like Nick mentioned, these are net new users. These are not people that were stealing from Google and cannibalizing through Microsoft. These are entirely separate users that we weren't targeting. And Microsoft users need hardware just as much as Google Ads users do. Um, so it's a great success. We're still running them today um, and still growing the platform. Um, for them. On the shopping side, so there are similarities between the manual side of shopping. So Microsoft and Google Ads both run manual shopping campaigns. They both can use automated bid strategies, but they're still a very manual setup. They're using the feed. We're pulling products out, segmenting um, the campaigns that way. The difference with Google Ads is Google Ads no longer has smart shopping. They have performance max campaigns. And performance max campaigns include shopping placements, but also includes like search, display, video, discovery much wider reach. Microsoft hasn't branched out to have one campaign type that targets all surfaces and they have instead smart shopping campaigns, which is what Pmax used to be for Google. So you can still get really aggressive, use automation on Microsoft ads, um, product ad listings or PLAs. Um, but there is that difference there of Google ads has leaned much more towards not differentiating shopping placements from other placements with Pmax, whereas Microsoft still leans into that. And then on the display side, so that's that multimedia ads again. So multimedia ads we can use within the search campaigns, but then we can also use within Microsoft's version of display, which is called audience ads. The Microsoft ads run across MSAN, which stands for Microsoft Ads Network. So that is their, their own version of the Google Display Network, which is GDN. Multimedia ads, I think one of the benefits is you don't have to rebuild for search versus display. You can you know use the same creative, same copy, as long as it makes sense within the ad placement itself. On the Google Ads side, we have to build separate responsive display ads from anything we put in our search campaigns because they don't touch each other. You can run banner ads on Google Ads, and then you can also run that new campaign type, or not new, I guess, it's been around for a few years, but discovery ads, which only run on YouTube, um, YouTube, Gmail, and the Discover feed because those are uniquely owned Google properties. 
And then an example here for a case study. So this was a state client that we had that started running discovery ads um, and display ads as well. So for discovery, they and earned about 50, cannot speak, earned about 45K in revenue at a 408% return on ad spend by investing new incremental spend towards discovery. And then same thing for display, they started testing and scaling that channel as well. And they earned about 60K in revenue at a 370% return on ad spend, all the much higher ROAS than they were even shooting for and it worked out really well for them. Um, so would invest on the Google side, definitely want to use all the ad types available to them, but also of course on the Microsoft side too. And then on the Microsoft side, so this is an example of an MSAN, so the Microsoft Ads Network, so that's like the display placements for a client called Virtue Walker. So they had revenue growth goals that they wanted to achieve while still maintaining that 750% return on ad spend. Um, what ended up happening for them by investing separately incremental ad spend towards MSAN was that their spend increased 228% year over year. In tandem, their ROAS also increased 236% year over year. And with that also came the increased revenue. So revenue was up 310%. It was a huge win for them. They're still running it now too. Um, and yeah, we're gonna keep running that for this client as we go forward. Sweet. And then so for video ads, I will say Google does have a bit of a leg up here because they own YouTube. YouTube is the number one, actually that could be contended with TikTok now, number one or number two video streaming platform that exists. So on Google ads, you can run video action campaigns with the goal of driving conversions or video reach campaigns with the goal of driving awareness. However, you shouldn't just disregard Google because, or not Google, shouldn't disregard Microsoft because Google owns YouTube. On Microsoft, you can still run video ads through MSAN and then Microsoft does have partnerships with um, Xander, which allows you to run um, like OTT on like much larger platforms with a much larger upfront investment. And then just some stats here on why you should invest into YouTube because it is one of the strongest platforms for getting people to convert who don't know what they want. Um, so 90% of people say they discover new brands or products on YouTube. I can claim I am one of them. I am easily influenced by what people are showing me on YouTube and I buy it all the time. And then 70% of YouTube view of viewers bought a, from a brand as a result of seeing it on YouTube, whether it's through ads or influencers or anything like that, but they are seeing products on YouTube and they are converting. And so you should be there too. Sweet. Um, so then using feeds and video action and reach campaigns. So adding a feed to your product um, or adding a feed to your video campaigns allows the products in your feed to show below your video. This is really important to do because video campaigns typically don't have high click through rates. If you're ever watching video campaigns on your phone or your TV or your laptop, you're not really looking to do anything else. That is the goal of what you're doing is watching content. So you wanna to try to add as many triggers or call to actions that'll get people to leave that site and make a purchase for what you're selling. Um, I ran actually the specific example here. I had a supplements client. You're trying to get people to leave YouTube and make a purchase. And by turning the feed on, our click-through rate actually increased 73%. So it's a easy win for you guys to implement and get people leaving YouTube and going to your site. Sweet, and then for the last thing here was just cold audience targeting features. So like Nick mentioned, the biggest call out for Microsoft that is different than Google is that they have LinkedIn data so we can target by industry and job function. Google does have some data like this, but it's not nearly as granular or nearly as specific as Microsoft has. On the Google side, what's different is they have affinity audiences. So those are people who are interested in what you're selling, but not necessarily have a purchase intent that becomes in market once they have that intent. Um, I also say Microsoft has similar audiences. Google currently does, but Google will be sunsetting my, um, similar audiences very soon, so that'll be gone to us. Oh, and then automation, of course, too. Across both platforms, they both use the same automated bid strategies. I will just say, though, you shouldn't just copy and paste from Google to Microsoft. Both, bid, um, or both platforms require a minimum investment or a minimum conversion count for them to work properly, so you may have you know, a lot of conversions on Google, that makes it make sense to have TRO as targeting, but on Microsoft, it might not make sense. Um, did just want to highlight here, though, that they both have automated bid strategy. Microsoft can sometimes be, um, what's the word? They can be th seen as a more like manual campaign structure. You need to do a lot more of bidding the keywords up and down yourself. You don't, you just need to be strategic with your automated bid strategies, just like you would on Google. You wouldn't just throw something on there without thinking it through. Fantastic. And then the old school way here, this is something that Nick had mentioned before. So the old school way is just importing from Google Ads into Microsoft. 
you can still do this. This is still very much a feature that Microsoft allows. Um, Nick did mention too, it is finicky. It doesn't always work perfectly, but it is an option here. And if you don't have any spend from um, in Microsoft, if you're in that bucket of 100% Google, 0% Microsoft, this can be a gateway for you to start advertising on Microsoft, but you don't wanna stop here. You don't wanna just import and then like set it and forget it. So like, what can you bring over? You can bring over the keywords, the ads, the campaigns. You can pretty much bring over everything you're doing in Google. Um, you can bring over audiences and remarketing lists um, so that you can really can replicate your structure. But like I mentioned earlier, there's also features in Microsoft that don't exist in Google that you wouldn't be importing. You're not gonna be importing multimedia ads into your search campaigns because that doesn't exist in Google. And this is an example here. So you can go through the process of importing a campaign or you can upload the file itself. I actually really recommend uploading the file instead of importing it because then you can tailor it to your audiences more specifically. Tailor your copy, tailor what you wanna add into there. Um, you can also do a schedule so that is refreshing what you have in Google um, into Microsoft if need be. Awesome. Um, so we also wanna talk about essentially like strategic coordination now. If you're if, if you're not just going to treat Microsoft as the same as Google, um, you're going to try to deviate a little bit, you still want some linchpins to, to connect the dots. And you want to do so not just between Microsoft and Google, but ideally with every channel. This is a challenge that we've been dealing with um, for the greater part of our decade. Ten years ago, we would manage channels for clients to be in front of all their customers and that was six channels six channels got you everything and now it's over 15 channels just to stay in front of the same exact customers where they go on the internet and with the kind of the deviations of their their preferences we can't now say let's put together a holistic marketing strategy and we will look at 15 different line items uh, here's the spend Here's whatever revenue the platform told us they wanted to tell us through their own different formulas. I mean, it's not strategic, it's not helpful, it's a, it's not even great to compare. So we pivoted hard. We said, let's do something that is so much truer to marketing. Let's change the way that we look at strategy. Every marketing plan of all of history and all in of the future, every platform ever built, they all think about five desired outcomes of marketing. When a platform is built like Google or TikTok or, or Meta, they say, how do we help people get cold awareness? How do we help get people, this our advertisers in front of people who are in market? That's consideration. How do we get them back to past visitors till they buy? That's conversion. How do we get ads to past customers to buy again? That's loyalty. How do we get ads asking for likes and shares and reviews? That's advocacy. <clears throat> So every platform has thought this through. There are audience features and ad type features for each of these five desired outcomes in every platform. So we changed our way. We said, let's just plan an awareness strategy, a consideration strategy, a conversion, a loyalty, an advocacy strategy for each of our clients. These five strengths will help each other virtuously and spin the flywheel. And now, if you think from that perspective, and we go into what have you built on Google Ads in the awareness category that now you need to coordinate on Microsoft? We're going to kind of go section by section to get a sense of how that type of single desired outcome coordination should happen. Awesome. Yeah, so looking at the awareness bucket for what makes sense to use for Microsoft and Google, um, right off the bat, you'll see that search and shopping campaigns do not work with an awareness strategy. Um, these campaigns inherently are going after demand capture instead of demand generation. So if you're capturing demand, that's not awareness um, because that's in market, like Nick said. Uh, however, what you can use on Microsoft side for display ads is those multimedia ads. On Google, you can use those banner ads, the RDAs or discovery ads to go after those true awareness audiences 
people who don't know what they want, they're exploring brands, they're just engaging with the internet. We wanna be there in front of them. Same thing goes for video. So we would use video reach campaigns. Those specifically are targeted towards driving impressions. And at the awareness stage, the goal is impressions. It's not necessarily about revenue because that's gonna come down the road. We just want as many eyeballs on our ads and on our brand as possible. So on the Microsoft side, we would use those MSAN video ads. And then for the different audiences we can use, these are some examples. There's more out there for sure. Um, but for both of them, you can use demographics targeting. So, you know, women over 50 who have a household income of 80K plus or things like that. Or you can also make custom audiences for both those platforms that are, you know, searching for specific terms that relate to what you sell, but maybe they're not quite making a purchase yet. Um, and then on Google side, it is affinity audiences. So affinity can be like home decor enthusiasts. So they have an interest in home design, but they're not necessarily buying. They just have that interest and we want to be there in front of them. Awesome. And then for the consideration stage, so that's where search and shopping can really step in and make a difference. Um, this is where I spend a lot of my time for clients because since consideration is where a lot of people fall, they want something, they just don't know what they want from who yet. Um, so on the Microsoft and Google side, we can target a lot of the same strategies. So those non-brand keywords on both sides, competitor conquesting, so that's targeting brands that are your direct competitors to be in their ad space. So if I am Adidas and someone searches for Nike, I can show my Adidas ad there. Um, we'll also want to be targeting those DSA or dynamic search ads campaigns. And we'll say a big asterisk on the non-brand keywords and competitor conquesting is they might be different on Microsoft and Google. And I experienced that with a lot of clients right now where our keyword strategy on both platforms are different because the people shopping on the platforms are different. The brands they're searching for are different. Um, so you always want to keep that in mind. Again, it's not about copying and pasting from Google to Microsoft. On the shopping side, we can use those standard shopping campaigns, of course, across both. On the Google side, though, we want to make sure we're using Pmax campaigns, but with consideration audience signals. So how Pmax works is we're not necessarily telling Google only serve ads to these people, but the audience signals help guide Google in that direction. And so we want to guide it to those consideration audiences. We don't want it to only be targeting like free marketing or people like that because that's easy. And we want to make sure we're targeting everyone across the board. On the display ad side, same thing as the last slide. So those multimedia ads, those banner ads, RDAs, and discovery ads for Google can help us really get in front of those people who are in market. Um, same thing for video, we can use those MSAN video ads. But on Google ad side, this is where we're gonna start pivoting away from video reach and instead going after video action. Because if they are in market, that means they are, have a higher likelihood of converting. And video action is about driving conversions and less about driving impressions. Um, in terms of the audiences, for the same across both, we can use those in markets, we can use similar, and then we can use custom audiences. But again, Google Ads similar audiences are sunsetting very soon, so this will be soon be not quite accurate. And then for loyalty, oh, I just jumped ahead on us. Or no, conversion, right, yep. For our conversion slide here, so what we want to do on Microsoft to Google is owning your branded space. So owning your branded keywords. So this is to make sure that any other agencies or brands that are competitor conquesting on you are not winning. We want to make sure we own that space. Um, so we'd be bidding on exactly that. So if I am Adidas, I want to make sure I'm bidding on Adidas so that Nike can't come and steal my ad space. On the shopping side, we'll continue to use those standard shopping campaigns for Microsoft. Um, but on the Google side, we're gonna really lean into Pmax because Pmax is designed to drive conversions and we wanna get there. And then on Microsoft side, we'll continue to use smart shopping because that's an automated bid strategy or automated campaign type that is driving towards conversions as well. For Google on the display side, we're gonna to wanna to lean into those RDAs, especially with the feed enabled so that we're remarketing to people who are searching for products on the site, they're getting those products back. Um, we also wanna use discovery ads because discovery ads are well tailored towards driving conversions. And on the Microsoft side, we'll wanna use those multimedia ads again. And then for Microsoft video, we'll use those MSAN video campaigns again, but this time towards like remarketing audiences, Google ads will use those video action campaigns also towards um, driving or video towards the remarketing audiences. And then those audiences specifically for this phase are those non-purchasers, so people who have been to the site but never made a purchase, or their current abandoners. So they almost made a purchase, but they're not quite there. And then uniquely on the video ad side for Google, we can target video viewers to so people who saw the ad but didn't make a conversion or didn't make it to your site yet. So you wanna keep engaging them on YouTube and eventually they'll get to the site, or at least that's the goal. So. And then for loyalty here, 
Um, we want to, again, continue maintaining that branded ad space because that could be people who are searching for your brand that have purchased before or people who have searched for your brand but not made a purchase before. Continue to defend that space. Um, same thing for shopping. We're going to continue using standard shopping and smart shopping on Microsoft. Continue using Pmax and Google Ads to drive those conversions. Uh, for display ads, we're going to use multimedia ad for Microsoft. And again, those RDs and discovery ads for Google Ads. We're going to use the MSAN videos and then the video action videos as well to drive that loyalty. And then the big difference here is the audience targeting across the board for this. Loyalty is all about getting those past purchasers to purchase again. So that's why we're going to really focus in at this stage on getting that to happen. I think that's all set. <laughs> Oh, you're muted, Nick, I think. Thank you. Uh, so one of the questions that the com business owners have at this point is like, okay, I get all that, but talk to me about awareness. Why should I invest in awareness if consideration is where people are telling me, you know, they're showing my their hand, I'm interested in buying something. And what we found is roughly 30% of brands online when they're selling to their customer, if the customer doesn't know the brand name, there's no way they will buy from you, even if they find you. It could be your premium price point. It could be just the way of the industry. So like if you're buying a car, you're unlikely to buy a car that you just stumbled upon in Google. It's something that you've heard of before. There's some brand awareness. And if that is the case, then you're basically saying, only those who have brand awareness will buy. So the onus is on you from a marketing perspective to get more people to know your brand before they mature to a consideration stage. So in a brand-based journey, the efficiency drivers are as much awareness and as much conversion or marketing as possible. And if that's not the case, then you're just normal search-based. Show up for the categorical phrase, convert them. That's the hottest part. Anything else will just be a little bit extra. So it's a it's a fundamental question to ask yourself, how important is brand awareness to my customers? Can I actually have them buy from me if they don't know who I am? And just going to ask a poll here. Let's see. And the poll is not showing. Oh no. Okay. Well, why do we do this? Let's get everyone to use the questions box real quick. Are you a search based journey? Are you a brand based journey? According to the fundamental difference, where a brand based journey means that you're selling jeans for $150, no one's going to buy it unless they've heard of your brand before. So you got brand based, search based. Okay, we're split brand base two to one right now. Sean, Rochelle, uh, what what kind of uh, businesses are you guys in? Orlando is saying brand based as well. So right now, seventy five percent of you believe brand based. Rochelle, who is brand based, is in health and wellness. Sean. Um, brand based, uh, they focus on breastfeeding supplements. They have high trust threshold there. Makes perfect sense. Orlando does residential commercial technology integrators. Yep, that makes perfect sense for brand based as well. Let's give it a few more moments. Shay is saying brand based insurance marketing. Insurance is, is very much, unless unless you're getting to the parts of insurance where people don't know it as well, like travel insurance, then it doesn't carry as much as like life insurance and car insurance and home insurance. Great. Thank you guys for participating. That's fantastic. Oh, Search-based surf gear. Yeah, Stephen, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. People are very open-minded. Um, just talk a little bit about some of the unique features of MSN. And it gets to a question that was asked by Stephen earlier. 
with the rise of generative AI integrated into search engines, will it have an effect on paid advertising? So first, very unique feature of Microsoft is, like Melissa said, you, you have multimedia ads even showing up in search. Um, Microsoft's just done a, a better job of getting visual. Seven in 10 Microsoft ads include visuals. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite different from what Google has been able to pull off, although Google is trying to get in that direction. Also, Sorry, Nick, I just want to let you know, yes. you're not in presenter mode right now, or we're not seeing just the deck. We're seeing three screens at once. That's weird. Oh, and Orlando just said the same thing as I did, yep. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thanks, Orlando. <laughs> Great, so I was just saying unique features of MSN ads, seven and 10 are visual. Thanks guys for sticking with us through technical issues. Um, and then ChatGPT. So ChatGPT integrated into Bing. First of all, it's not being used like ChatGPT. If you use ChatGPT, you're asking questions, you're submitting um, ideas that you want ChatGPT to work into new text and things like that. ChatGPT in, integrated into Bing is very much a um, a search engine that is speaking to you. Essentially, it is conversing back um, an answer, a thoughtful answer that is pulling together a lot of information from a lot of places. It's also pulling a lot of reference material. And that reference material can be either um, ads or not ads. So when you're using the new Bing and someone says, you know, best hotels in Sydney, if you have ads that are organized around these phrases, then you might get cited in the answer as an ad. So these, the, the way that people are searching is going to be a little different from Google now. Uh, we're gonna see more best, more categorical searches, more list searches, but Google is preparing for that as well. Google just took a lot of the, um, the shopping intent pages out of their results, their organic results. They're elevating um, third party, neutral party um, um, reviews, like Wirecutter just got a huge boost in April and May of this past year. They're preparing to start emulating what Bing is doing, which is um, a mix of ads, incredible sources, opining on their uh, uh, one topic at a time. And the data comes together in these formats. So we're watching the type of keywords people are typing in because people are throwing questions at the new Bing in a different way to see how um, the layouts will come. And they'll start to form new trends over time. So over the course of the next few months, we'll see how people end up searching uniquely. And then Google will copy. You can see century shopping ads and results are popping up natively within the results as long as your feed is optimized for the queries being typed in. Another thing that is unique to Bing, um, while Google tried this for a long time, they wanted to create a direct import of Facebook ads into dis uh, discovery ads. They didn't seem to pull it off. Microsoft has a uh, Facebook ads import, you can just import directly to the import section from Facebook ads and it pulls your Facebook ads library into Google. Like the Google ads import, it is, uh, it's also a little finicky, but at least it's built. Danielle asked, would you share the slides after this? Of course, yes. The slides, PDF, and a copy of the recording. And we're going to take questions. So. Um, first of all, you know, once again, we've talked about this a little bit. 
the majority of you are not really investing in Microsoft. If you're looking for a partner that will think about Microsoft and Pinterest and TikTok and Walmart and Target and email and SMS, all in a way that actually comes together, that's what we do. We have deep specialization in these platforms. The reason Melissa can speak so articulately about every nook and cranny, lever and dial of Microsoft is because we have people who specialize in the platforms. But we also have a team of strategists who say, no, 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 there aren't 15 platforms. There's one platform. We believe in one platform. We'll treat it as one platform. We'll come up with strategies as if it was one platform. And luckily, we have an amazing tech team that is literally pulling in all the data from all these channels into one platform, organizing it as if all of marketing, 15 channels, 25 channels, doesn't matter how many, is still one platform. We get to make all these smart decisions around it. So there's one side of the business that does strategy and technology uh, as one, and another side that goes deep into. And we get to round it up all together. Well, let's just ignore the return on ad spend metrics everyone's throwing at us using different formulas. We'll look at total marketing costs divided by total revenue, one simple elegant number, marketing efficiency ratio to change the game once again, all built into our system. And maybe some of you are interested in seeing what we would do for your business. Like if we studied your business, your competitors, your search for brand based journey, the right channel mix for you, we dove into your Google ads to think about how we can slowly and carefully transition this and add Microsoft. We can ask the questions, should you be on Amazon, Walmart, Target, Critio, TikTok, Pinterest, why? We'll do all this for free. We'll basically put together a complete marketing plan for you, following the principles that we've used since 1997. And we'll guide you, ideally, to your fastest growth you've had. And I'll keep that up while we check out other questions. So, um, Melissa, you might know this one. Can we add the audiences from Credio Awareness Campaigns to Bing Ads? How similar are those? Yeah, I was thinking about that when I saw that come through. So, the, crit the specific Critio audiences, if you're thinking about like targeting the same audiences in Critio, there's definitely going to be some similar options within Bing to target. But if you're saying about targeting like people who came in through Critio in through Bing, that would require just like targeting remarketing audiences. Um, I'm not seeing the question or I'm not yeah. searching. I don't know if I answered uh, that I, well, but yeah. I'll add a few more things. Um, up and up, um, the First of all, in Critio, you can target three different price tiers, right? There's a low uh, standard and premium, like um, buyer segments based on how price sensitive people are. That particular data only exists in Critio. Critio is great for that. Um, Critio does have, to Melissa's point, a connector with Clavio. It is a native uh, integration between Clavio and Critio, Clavio and Google, Clavio and Meta. But you can um, connect Clavio to uh, Microsoft ads using the same audiences you use for Critio, but you need to use a Zapier intro, uh, uh, integration for that. Oh, you don't use Clavio. Okay. Um, might be a good. I wonder what you guys are using, but maybe we'll catch up later on that. Um, in my industry, so Shay is talking about the industry of insurance marketing. In my industry, we tend to get more traffic with a smaller ad spend. More traffic from Microsoft with a smaller ad spend than Google. Hmm. But there's an SEO-related reason. Is there an SEO-related reason for this differentiation? You get more traffic from Microsoft with a smaller ad spend. So your cost per click on Microsoft is significantly lower 
then your cost per click on Google. Microsoft yeah. is typically cheaper per click, so that makes sense. Um, yeah. You could also have a brand, non-brand mix that is different than the way you've set up Google versus Microsoft, unless you have been carefully thinking through, here's my awareness, my consideration, conversion, loyalty. You might actually be over-investing in conversion and brand on, um, let's say, Microsoft, for example, where you're just paying for your own uh, branded keywords and your competitors are not invested there. We saw how many competitors are there going to be if 80% if of the people here don't even invest in Microsoft, right? So if your competitor is not there, they're not targeting your brand keyword the same. You go in, just target your brand keywords on Microsoft, low cost per click, high conversion rate, it's going to overperform. So it really depends on how much apples to apples we're talking here. But if you did more apples to apples, it's likely that the numbers are going to balance out a little bit more. I will say, though, there is less competition on Microsoft, so the same applies to non-brand. Um, less people bidding on the same space, which is why you should also get in there. There's just less competitors. Caleb's asking, what would you recommend as a good split for Microsoft and Google? 50-50, different per industry. Um, Melissa, I wonder what your answer would be for kind of breaking that down, spend versus time. Uh, yeah, I would say in terms of spend right now, it, it does vary. I mean, it's always the classic answer. It depends. Um, I would say going into it with at least aiming for like a 70, 30, 60, 40, Google is typically going to spend more. There's just far more users on Google, but you don't want to ignore the users on Microsoft. Um, there's also different options for targeting, like we talked about on Microsoft. So I'd aim for 60-40. Um, but in terms of time and investment, like Nick said, I, or time itself, like the investment of your time, um, you would want to make that as much as to 50-50 as possible. Because I do think sometimes Microsoft is a self-fulfilling prophecy, too, of we don't put time towards it, so we don't generate revenue from it. But you're not generating revenue because you're not putting time towards it. Um, so you want to make sure that you are putting that time towards it um, and giving it that TLC. But in terms of spend, yeah, I'd say like 60, 40, 70, 30, depending on the industry. Um, yeah. And there was also a question okay. earlier um, towards the start of the call from Stephen. That was, will the rise of generative AI being integrated into search engines have an effect on paid advertising within Google and Microsoft. And I think, Nick, you kind of did touch on that of just the way people search is going to change. So our ads are going to have to change too with it. So like the yeah, I think and, yeah. One, of, one of the other things that we're going to have to watch for is the, um, the erosion of ad space when Microsoft and Google are competing for having the most uh, user preferred SERP result, an AI generated SERP result, how much of that space should now go towards ads. Google's current SERP real estate layout is very ads heavy. After Larry Page came back as CEO and in April 2012, his initiatives were always deliver more and more ad space. And the way Microsoft has created their layout, if that is what people become conditioned to and Google copies that, there's not as much room for for ads. You get much more competitive. Um, so that's something to watch for. I don't think Google is going to shoot themselves in the foot with that, but they also don't want to lose too much market share. Um, do we have any other questions? From the group? And if not, we've got, uh, we're pretty much good on time. Thank you folks for joining. Hopefully this was helpful in kind of highlighting, um, what this new opportunity looks like. We're obviously excited to get people to think about this and open up to investing more in Microsoft because it's working 
And whenever we have kind of saturation over time, cost per clicks increasing on Meta and Google, the platforms that are waiting in the wings that are more efficient and have less advertisers, as you saw from the poll, there's less advertisers, it's cheaper. That's where we want to move dollars and balance things out so you have year over year stability and year over year growth. So thank you, folks. Thank you, Melissa. Um, hopefully, this was super helpful, folks, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.